Well, a single qubit system is interesting in that it can be in a superposition of classical states and measurements on it have a probabilistic nature. A quantum computer operating with a single qubit is not going to be very powerful. So to go further in our study of quantum computing, we need to learn how to treat systems consisting of multiple qubits. So let's start with a two qubit system. A system with two qubits has four distinguishable states. Both qubits could be in the zero state, both qubits could be in the one state, or the qubits could be in different states. And there's two ways that can happen. So because there are four distinguishable states for a two qubit system, we model a two qubit system as a normalized vector in a four dimensional vector space. And the standard basis for this vector space consists of these vectors, zero, zero, and this represents both qubits being in the zero state, zero, one, and this represents the first qubit being in the one state, the second qubit being in the zero state. So read these labels from right to left. The rightmost number is the state of the first qubit. Um, the state one zero, which is the first qubit being in the zero state, the second qubit being in the one state, and the state one one, where both qubits are in the one state. Let's look at a quick example. Let's say that the State vector for the two qubit system is one over root two times zero, zero plus zero, one. So if we make a measurement of the system, we'll collapse the state vector to the basis vector zero, zero with probability one half. That is the complex conjugate of one over root two times one over root two. And we'll collapse it to the basis vector zero, one also with probability one half, because both of these basis vectors have the same amplitude. It's impossible to collapse it to the vector one zero or one one, because the amplitudes of both of those vectors are zero. So we're guaranteed to find the second qubit in the zero state, because both of the basis vectors we could collapse the state vector two have the second qubit in the zero state. And we have equal probability of finding the first qubit to be in the state zero and the state one. Writing out the state that each individual qubit is in for the basis vectors isn't tedious when we're talking about a two qubit system. But when we're dealing with a 100 qubit system, it's very cumbersome to write out 100 ones and zeros for each basis vector. So a shorthand for talking about these vectors is to interpret the string of one and zeros as a binary number and to replace that binary number with its decimal representation. So the vector zero, zero becomes the vector zero, zero, one becomes one, one, zero becomes two, and one, one becomes three. So a very quick refresher of binary numbers is if we have a string of ones and zeros, bn minus one, bn minus two, all the way to b1 and b0, where each of these b's is either a one or a zero, the decimal representation of that binary string is b0 times two to the zero plus b1 times two to the one, all the way up to bn minus two times two to the n minus two plus bn minus one times two to the n minus one. So that's just how to convert between a binary string and its decimal representation. In general, an n qubit system will have two to the n distinguishable states because the first qubit has two possible states, second qubit has two possible states, and so on all the way up to the nth qubit, making a total of two to the n distinguishable states. So the state vectors that model this system live in a two to the n dimensional vector space with bases consisting of two to the n vectors. And using the notation we just introduced, these vectors are usually given as zero, one, two, all the way up to two to the n minus one. And the zero vector 
represents the state where all the qubits are in the zero state, and the two to the n minus one vector represents the state where all of the qubits are in the one state. By the way, the inner product for these multi-qubit systems is what you would expect it to be. If we take the inner product between any two of these basis vectors and they're not equal, the inner product is zero. And if we take the inner product between a basis vector with itself, the inner product is one. That is to say that these basis vectors are all orthonormal. Finally, I want to talk about a special state called the uniform superposition. It's usually denoted by the vector s. The uniform superposition is a state where the probability of collapsing the state vector to any of the basis vectors is equal. That is, all of the basis vectors have the same amplitude. That's why it's called a uniform superposition. So for a single qubit system, the uniform superposition is just 1 over root 2 times 0 plus 1. So we have a probability of 1 half of collapsing to either the state 0 or the state 1. For two qubits, the uniform superposition is 1 half times 0, 0 plus 0, 1 plus 1, 0 plus 1, 1. So we have a 1 quarter probability of collapsing to each of the classical states. A more concise way to write this is to use um, summation notation and to use the decimal representation of these basis vectors. So we would write this uniform superposition as one half, then summing from x equals zero to three, the basis vector x. So this hits our four basis vectors, zero through three. And finally, for n qubits, the uniform superposition is going to be some amplitude k, which we'll figure out in a second, times the sum of all of these basis vectors. And here you can see where this um, notation for the basis vectors is really handy because we're summing up a large number of these very concisely. So we know if we take the inner product of s with itself, it has to be equal to 1 because a state vector in quantum mechanics has to be normalized. And the inner product of s with itself is going to be k squared plus k squared all the way up to 2 to the n k squares. And since this has to equal 1, we know k is equal to 1 over root 2 to the n. And this makes sense because this means that the probability of collapsing to any of the classical states is 1 over 2 to the n. And since there's 2 to the n of these, they sum to 1. So the uniform superposition for n qubits is 1 over root 2n times the sum of all of the basis vectors.